I've got a bit of a mystery coolant leak, it turns out. That it's actually coming from the uh, heater matrix pipes, which are hidden up here. Those two silver pipes, obviously, that come through the firewall. Two black clips, and they've been leaking coolant. It would basically go from maximum on the bottle level to minimum over a period of about four weeks. So no matter where I looked, I couldn't find the problem in the engine bay. So long story short, felt the carpet here in the corner and it was soaking wet, so. And you could see there was dribbles of coolant running down. The easiest way to check is the carpet will be wet in some, some places. And quite often this drips, obviously from here, down here, sometimes it's on the side of the box, sometimes it's here. But anyway, long story short, the first thing you've got to do is actually get access to it. And that's to get this panel off here. But to do that, you have to take two or three panels off before that. What you've got to do is first of all, lift up your trim on the side of the door and lift this part down, pop him in the side, just to get an edge under it really. You can take this down and sort of get your fingers in, but this panel comes away to the side, excuse the camera angles. So that comes off and then rolls round to the right and then the whole panel comes away. So now you have your side panel off the side of the dash. So then you have this screw in the side here, which attaches this panel to the sort of main part of the dash. So you can take your coin purse out. He just clips down there with the squeeze at the sides. Okay, so it's a T25 Torx bit because obviously posi drives and flatheads are far too easy to work on. So I'll have to make everything complicated. So we'll just whip him out. That's that screw out of there, there's only one. And then this obviously unhooks and then the whole thing apparently just sort of pulls down. Okay, so this panel itself has several clips on it. So you unhook it from the side here. There's a little hook thing, you unhook that side. This piece comes out of here, that's just a location piece. There's a clip here, just in this piece. So if you hold round here, pull that piece out. There's another clip in this top corner. So this top corner's up here, you just pop that down. And then a bit further back from that, there's another one clipped into here. You just pop that out as well. We've got a electrical connector cable tied into the plastic doing nothing. I think that's for the under dash airbag if they have one in a foreign country. Otherwise the loom is just cabled in there to stop it flapping about. And then in this corner over there, there's like a little arrow piece. There's another little arrow piece over there. And then there's another little arrow piece just in there. So there we go, cut the cable tie obviously very carefully. This plug is, there's no, there's nothing going on in here. It's just a blank empty hole. This has not got an airbag here, so I'm not worried about it. So that's that. So I think it's best if you push it back up and then pull it directly down. So we'll try that. Let's try and sit you up sideways. I don't know if you can see anything, but we'll give it a go. And there we are. Panel is now free. Yeah, and there's your weirdness. It is actually clipped in. The cool thing is this is obviously meant to be for this specific purpose. It has actually got like a little arrow tab here. I don't know if you can see that. So the electrical connector, you do actually have to push the release button on the side and then slide it up and the electrical connector comes up. I've tucked him up out of the way there so he doesn't get any schmutz on him or get any crap inside it when we're cleaning up the coolant so another piece of trim goes away and now we can see a bit better and we've got a bit more room to stop banging our head on things so so the next thing off is this little access cover it is what it is you know I'm trying to do this obviously one-handed without a tripod there we go and on the back of that, there are two plastic clips. And if you want, what you can do is feel around the back and just push the plastic clips out with your finger through there. It's actually a little bit easier to do that. So then we've got to take this out. You'd hope it unscrewed, but it didn't. So another little bit of prying shenanigans. Hopefully not going to break this. Or again, let's see if we can poke him out from the back. Oh, pointy, very pointy. There you go, that's out, and it's one of them one-way sort of fir tree fasteners, not a screwing one. So now this corner's a bit more free. So obviously this sticks in behind this, and this hooks, 
hooks up in there. Okay, so we've pried up the gear gator trim, so that's now up in midair. Pried up the two pieces here, because this has two tabs that sits in this side piece. There's a third one at the back, pried him up as well, and that sort of slips out from underneath. And goes up out of the way, so now we can get this side off, which is under this. And this is bolted in again with the torques here, so this has to come out. This half of this is clipped in the top of it, and you're never going to unclip it. You're never going to get this out sort of towards you when this is stuck in above it, if you know what I mean. So, take that out. Just lifts up and pops out of the way apparently. There we go. So now if you look inside you can see where these clips are on this side panel. There we go. There's a couple of them at least. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. And hopefully, we should be able to unhook Mr. Stupid. And now, side panel is off of the car so that's the back of it hooks in here behind to the other piece one two three four at least four clips there to take him out funny hooky thing at the top and little tabby thing as well and you can see down there where it's obviously been leaking and you can see a drip here where it's been leaking from that joint. There's also some in between the two. Now, I don't know if that's leaked from the top and got down or gone from the other one, but either way, we're gonna be replacing both now we've got it apart, but that's how you get to the problem to fix it, so. Okay, so these are the two heat hoses that go through into the passenger compartment. So I've clamped them off with some flexible hose, sort of crimps or whatever you call them to try and reduce the amount of coolant that's actually going to come out when I pop the pipes. There's also this plastic clamp here that holds them, stops them flapping around in the engine bay, and you simply slide that sideways at the bottom, at the very bottom of it, you sort of slide it sideways, and then this piece lifts up. And then that way the clamps, the hoses can actually come out of the clamp. So when you're trying to move these around and push them back forwards and backwards, you can get them out. The only areas to be careful of here are, this is obviously a 1.6 petrol, but down here, there's obviously quite a sharp metal bracket and this hose is about 25 mil or an inch away from it. So you just gotta be careful where that ends up when you're pushing it and pulling it. The rest of the stuff, there isn't too much to crash into and I don't think you can really move them that far sort of through the bulkhead anyway, just obviously moving the minimum you can, I guess. And I've already popped my clamps off. So these are the clamps that are on there, obviously. And if you look at the back of them, there'll be one part that looks like that. And you stick a little screwdriver in there and flick this sort of overlapping section. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. If not, I'll put a picture up, but there's a section that overlaps it. So you flick that out and then they just pop open and they really did pop open without any effort at all. So there wasn't much tension going on with either of these. I did have a little play with them and the top one was spinning quite loosely as well. And when I twiddled it today, it was leaking as well. So the next thing is obviously to try and get this section out of here. This is obviously going through the firewall to the pipes we've just crimped off. What you've got to be careful of is this, this is obviously to the heater matrix and this is fixed to it. It does, I mean the heater matrix does sort of rattle around a bit on my one, probably. It's supposed to have sponge in it or something, but anyway. 
but what you've got to be careful of obviously is don't bend these pipes or anything don't leave her on these too much because if these crack you're gonna have to take the whole thing out which sucks so the idea is to sort of hold this still and then push this away maybe we're gonna need a bit of a twist because where it goes up through that uh plastic box section doesn't look like it's just going to simply slide back in it looks like we might have to twist and wiggle a bit which is why you've got to be careful uh may even need an assistant so i'm not going to show you that on camera because it's just going to be me swearing at some pipes but yeah now it's time to separate that obviously be very careful i really wouldn't like the idea of shoving anything in between these two pipes to try and pry them open because the o-ring seal is sort of in this area and if you distort and damage any of this stuff it's going to leak so uh, there is another option where people put hose over this but there isn't a huge amount in between these two pipes to actually get your hose and jubilee clip in so i don't know quite how they uh how they actually secure at this end but anyway stick with plan a replace what ford did again probably and uh i'll uh, pull this apart and see how much coolant pisses out that's the bottom one popped the top one didn't the top one looks a lot harder to get out so i thought well i'll pop the bottom one i basically ended up holding this so it didn't go anywhere and then pushing this uh upper tube with my other hand sort of this way i get away from it but also perhaps a little twist sort of to the left because if you look up there the bottom of the pipe is resting on that plastic tube that goes through the firewall and the top pipe currently is resting on the top of the firewall so somehow we've got to get that up up and back but anyway the first one's off you can see here as well there's either some sort of sealant or that is the remnants of the old o-ring sort of stuck on the flange or the flare whatever you want to call it of that other pipe there so that's got to be cleaned off to obviously help it seal properly when it goes back in and then you've got to fish your o-ring out but we'll sort this out and then we'll uh, get the top pipe off Okie dokie, well those are the two o-rings out, managed to pick them out of the pipe, both of them stayed in obviously the female side of the pipe here, right up at the very end where this sort of thicker section is, it's basically like a little channel, um, like a c-shaped channel in cross section, it was quite difficult to get these out, the first one I managed to pick a bit of it um, from the inside and then sort of hook it out with like a real small blunt screwdriver or like the end of a pick, but you've got to be careful obviously not to scratch or damage these too much or at all or they might leak um so the top one what i did was actually shoved my finger in the end of it in the end of the pipe and then picked it down because as soon as because as i was trying to flick it out this way it's obviously stuck well within the groove but if I, I put my finger inside it got it with my fingernail and then scooped it down and pulled it out of the groove and then i just was able to tease it straight out but uh yeah one of them not too bad a condition some of it, it was torn off where it was stuck on top of the other pipe on the flare of it and this one at the bottom was absolutely mangled so there you go i don't know if you can see that because uh gopros don't really do focusing down to a low level but i'll stick a couple of pictures up but these are absolutely barbecued so now we get the fun of putting the o-rings back in there i'm going to stick a little bit of grease on here and then pop these two back in very gently because you don't want to pinch an o-ring or pull it out of its groove essentially but you can't really mess with them too much it's kind of a one-shot deal really if you pull them apart and push them together too many times you'll just rip them so okie dokes so we're all done now there wasn't a huge amount i could film because there's no room in to get in there basically but like i say once i got the old o-rings out double check there was no remnants of it left in the ring of the female then lubed them up with uh, basically some antifreeze because you know they're going to be okay with antifreeze aren't they and that's pretty slippery stuff anyway poked the bottom half of it in and then sort of folded the top of the ring in and you have to sort of like hook it under essentially and then shoved my finger in and sort of moved it around to smooth the o-ring into the groove so you know it's seated properly double checked it with a little dentist mirror to make sure it was in there and not sort of half hanging in or whatever um, and then on the ends of the male before I put them back in you can either lube them up with some uh, antifreeze, but I used some silicone grease that I had. This is what divers use to rebuild their breathing equipment. Um, so yeah, I did that. Then all I had to do was pull the uh, pipes back, swing them over, and then gently sort of poke them back in. Like I say, I lubed up the male end of the, uh, the pipe to go in. 
So it's, and that just slipped in lovely. Um, it wasn't too much of a fight. You could feel it going okay. And then put the clips back on it, back together. I've warmed it up um, and so far no leaks or drips or anything. So I'm more than happy with that basically. Um, I might swap these clips around. At the moment I've got with the clips with the separated end this side and the hinge side the other side. What I might do is when it's cooled down and there's no more pressure in the system, I might actually unclip them, turn them around so the clip part is hidden behind it. So if you get in and clonk it with your foot, you're not in danger of accidentally opening up that clamp. So I'll have the hinge side facing out and the clip side hidden behind. You can't actually spin them a full 180 on this because it hits the other pipe. So anyway, that's it. I'm happy with the fix so far. I'm gonna leave my pristine brand new clean white piece of tissue here so if anything drips overnight when it cools because sometimes when that cools down it might leak again who knows anyway that's there ready to catch any evidence um i'm gonna go and have me lunch uh hope you enjoyed it hope you got something out of it um don't forget to uh press the like button if you like the video it's just a way to say thank you for uh the effort that people make on youtube so my name's dan this is dan 91's garage don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode.